Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith, and this is something a bit different. Are oh, we gonna put some music in the background? Uh, yeah, today we're making a tier list. <laughs> uh, yeah, I realize with three houses coming up soon, I don't have enough time to do another uh, Fire Emblem Let's Play. And even though I'm not gonna be Let's Playing Three Houses when it comes out, I still... Oh, I'm not going to be uploading other Fireman content because no one's going to watch it when Three Houses is out. Uh, so yeah, I have decided, you know, I've played all 15 main series Fireman games, uh, including all remakes and everything, and so I might as well, you know, give, give my little rankings. I'm going to try and keep this civil, <laughs> try and keep this objective as much as possible. I have some opinions on them, and this is a perfect way for me to show my opinions on them. Um, but just because a game's like my favorite for one or two things it does, I'm gonna be objective and be like, okay, but let's be honest here, what does it do right, what does it do wrong? Uh, yeah, so now it's time to flame me for my horrible opinions, let's get down to it. Okay, let's, instead of doing it with whatever order it gave me in, I'm just gonna do it in the order of the actual games themselves. So, Fire Emblem 1. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, sh I should probably also talk about, like, okay, yeah, S tier is gonna be, like, you know, best games by far. A tier is pretty good, but, you know, definitely not, you know, has, has some improvement to be made. B and C are kind of shaky. C is, like, I'd say average, like, decent at best, kind of throughout. D has things they struggle with. And I'm also going to be talking about games in a modern context, uh, in terms of like, okay, someone new playing them today, what would they get out of it? So even though one would say, oh, Awakening saved the franchise, I'm not going to hold that, you know, to Awakening, just because like, you know, I'm going to hold it on its own merits. I'm also not going to say, oh, Fire Emblem 1 is the best Fire Emblem because it's the first Fire Emblem game ever made and everything else had to come after that. No, it, I'm going to actually rate it based on how the game is itself. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna put these on. It's gonna be fun. I might bounce them back and forth. So yeah, Fire Emblem 1. It's alright. It's functional. It's playable. It has some real struggles. It's slow to get through. It's not really broken, I'd say. Um... It definitely is unintuitive, especially with like the weapon system, weapon leveling system, mages not meaning stats. I don't know. I still think it's a fun game. I still think it's interesting. I definitely don't think it's, you know, it has plenty of room to grow. And it, it, it also is not too broken, but the parts where it is broken is very broken, like the uh, Manakee defense bug. <laughs> I don't want to give it an F though, because... I actually had fun when I played it. You have to get yourself into the mindset of it's a jank NES game, but it's not bad. I'd have to probably rate it like D, maybe C if I'm feeling generous. Because honestly, it's not bad, but, but let's be honest, you could do a lot better. Uh, there's a lot better games, a lot better versions of Marth's story, to be honest. Like, there is basically no story in here. Uh, the story of uh, Shadow Dragon is best portrayed by Not Enough Fire Emblem, in which case, there is no story, you just make it up as you go, and that thing's hilarious. Uh, almost want to put it to C rank just because Pantsless Marth, but whatever. Fire Emblem 2, Fire Emblem Gaiden, just play Gaiden, bro. Mm. It's a good game, it's slow, a bit, it can be a bit slow, it's a bit broken, um doesn't have too much in terms of like story or characters or whatnot. Uh, I'm still gonna put it B rank because this thing's fun. It's really fun just messing around with the broken rings. Like sure that you have the angel ring that everyone knows about, but you have like the speed ring, maxes your speed, gives you plus five move. Uh, the magic ring gives you like all your spells of like base five range. This game is insane and broken and I love it. It doesn't get to A rank because, uh, oh, we'll talk about that when we have some A rank games on here, but it definitely is a lot more enjoyable than a lot of other Fire Emblem games. I mean, not a lot, and some of them. It's a lot more enjoyable than people give it credit for. I like it. Um, 
Fire Emblem 3, where are you? Um, where are you? This one, right here. Fire Emblem 3 it has the whole two book thing going on there. Book 1 is just a better version of Fire Emblem 1, so by that nature it's at least C tier. Book 2 is fun, has a lot of units, uh, is definitely more playable than Fire Emblem 1. Uh, makes sense. It was pretty fun to play. Has some awful maps. Just a couple of maps there that just like they come out of nowhere and it just screws you over. Um, it it's weird. Um, it definitely is one of those games. And I'm gonna be saying this a lot. It gets better the more you play it. But at the same time, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It has some weird balancing issues in Book 2, and Book 1, well, Book 1 is just a better version of you know, uh, Fire Emblem 1. Mostly better. Takes out Ballistas. Single tier. Uh, Ballistas sucked in Fire Emblem 1, they didn't actually equip like Ballistas. They were just basically four, they were basically just four move archers. Special weapons. That sucked. But yeah, uh, Fire Emblem 3 gets a C tier from me. Fire Emblem 4, Genealogy of the Holy War. Ooh. I'm gonna put this. Again, another game that gets better as the more you play it, but it was still really good the first time I played it. I really enjoyed Genealogy. It has some annoying stuff, and it can be a bit of a slog sometimes, but you know, no other Fire Emblem game really gives you the sense of scale that it does. It really gives you the sense of progression, the sense of building out these characters. Um how much hidden stuff there is for multiple playthroughs. Uh, the fact that like there's like secret conversations with freaking Arden if you marry Arden with anyone else. It's it's amazing. This game is packed full of content. It's not just the first generation. The second generation has a ton of stuff too. Uh, there's all the units you get if you don't pair anyone up. It's it's a really great game. It's just a bit of a slog to get through. Like, if you're watching, like, Mangz's run right now, the arena, uh, it's like, okay, three whole episodes worth of just arena-ing, and that's, like, planning it out and trying to do a ranked run. I might try to do a ranked run sometime, too, who knows. But for now, I'm just gonna give it an A rank, because it's not, like, the best fireman game by far, but it's definitely in the top there. It's definitely one of my favorite games. Next, we come to Thracia, and... Oh, Thracia. Oh, Thracia. I, it's not a bad game. It's not a bad game. It's very playable. It's very enjoyable, mostly. But I just never liked the random elements that they put in. Random movement growths, random movement stars, random build growths. It's a game that feels like it was... Like... It feels like playing it on an emulator with save states is at the same time cheating and also playing as intended, because there are so many ways this game screws you over. It's not as hard as people say, it just has a lot of unfair mechanics that, you know, pull the rug over your eyes, and if you're not prepared for them, if you don't know how they work, if you don't know how deployment orders work, if you don't know how that stuff works, you're just gonna get screwed over, you're gonna have a bad time. It did introduce a lot of good staples to the series, rescuing, having multiple types of maps in the same game, all this type of stuff. Um, and it's a good game. But I think I can't really give it more than like a... Do I give it a B? I don't know if I give it a B right now, I think this is like C territory. I'll decide on it later. Yeah, I think it's honestly probably a C rank. Uh, yeah. Fire Emblem 6. Okay, so Fire Emblem 6. The very first time I played it, I did not enjoy this game. I, pl I came to it right after FE7, and it just felt clunky. It felt bad. I It was a fan translation instead of a full English one, so it was like really makes sense, plus it has all those sorts of fan translation issues where it's like swearing all the time and did all that stuff. It was probably a really old translation I was using at the time too. 
but the more I play it, the more I appreciate it. It has some lame maps, sure, but it has a sense of scale that, you know, not anywhere near genealogy, but it has some scale to it, it has a sense of progression. I'm not gonna say every character is good, but most characters are at least useful at some point. Um, everyone feels like they have a purpose to exist in the game, and the game's cast is really large. It's a weird game too, because you actually get, I'd say the best units in the game are the latest joining ones, which is not true of basically any other Fire Emblem game. Uh, arguably seven. But yeah, it gets better over time, it just keeps getting better the more I play it. It is very clunky, getting through the first time, but it keeps getting better every time I play it. It's gonna, it's gotta go with Gaiden for me, it's, it's a B rank, solid game, not my absolute favorite, but again, a really solid one. Fire Emblem 7, I have a lot of people's first introduction to the series, a lot of people's favorite. I never grew up with this one. No, I started with Path of Radiance and Sacred Stones. I I never really got into Fire Emblem 7 that much. I've played through it several times now. Um, I like it. I think it's a good game. I think it has a lot of you know, pros, a lot of good things to it. Uh, it's definitely a little easy, uh, but it's not too easy. Uh, especially on hard mode, you can actually do some fun stuff. The ranking system is really interesting with that. Um, but I just don't have that strong of an attachment to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not something that I really have a lot of emotion about. And so I think that means it's got to go on B rank. Really solid game, but I just don't have a great drive to keep replaying it. Sacred Stones. This is hard for me. Because Sacred Stones is probably my favorite Fire Emblem game, or at least one of them. It, it's top five, easy. Top three, definitely. But I don't know if I can put it S rank, because it is just too easy now for me. Uh, it's weird, playing Zero Bases made me enjoy playing Sacred Stones again. But everything else is like, it's way too easy, you know. Growing up, it was perfect, it was great. And there's all the endgame content, Lagdale Ruins, which is real challenging. And the game gives you a lot of good tools to play with. It gives you branching promotions for the first time in the series. Those wouldn't come back until Awakening. It, it does so much right. The characters are really great. The story's... Alright, I guess. The story's, story's pretty good. The story's decent, at least. Uh, characters, I love, like, almost all the characters of Sacred Stones. I can't even necessarily think of one that I dislike. Just some that I just never really, you know, got into, but... Yeah. It's a great game, but... I don't know if I can give it the S rank. I don't know if it's, it's there anymore. If I've gotta be honest, I've probably gotta give it an A rank. Uh, definitely a high rank, high A rank though. Um, nine, Path of Radiance. You know, until you play Maniac Mode, Path of Radiance is great. Maniac Mode suffers, but I love the way that this game not only had a great, detailed, and complicated story, but had so many different characters actually matter in the story. Like, all the Grail mercenaries, there are story branches depending... There's like a big flowchart of like, if X character is dead, then go this way. If, if not, then go that way. And so you're doing the same chapters, but the conversations are different. People talk about it in a different way. It, it managed to be deep and interesting and intricate without going the whole, like, Immortal Sword route of being overly complicated and complex. The gameplay itself was fun, it never feels like you're too overpowered until like the late game once you've been promoted and have supports and everything, and by that point you know, the maps get huge and there's all sorts of crazy stuff that happens and you can still get caught off your feet, 
Uh, it's a fun game. It's a great game. I'm going to give it an S rank. I don't think there's anyone I've talked to who hasn't enjoyed their time with Path of Radiance if they enjoy you know, the type of gameplay at all. I had some neighbors who played it and didn't really enjoy it at the time, but they just didn't like strategy RPGs. Path of Radiance is an S rank game. And right up there with it is Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn's my favorite game in the series. Um, Sacred Stones is, again, Sacred Stones, Path of Radiance, and Radiant Dawn are all up there for me, but Radiant Dawn has to be the best. Like, sure, sometimes the story gets a little bit convoluted with the whole blood pack thing, forcing Dayan to enter the fray, but that is not bad at all compared to, like, Fate's Revelations nonsense they had to pull to get everyone together. Uh, I love Path of Radiance, I love the three tiers of units, and also how it feels like all three tiers matter. I love how almost every unit in that game is useful, or at least can be useful, at some point. I love the multiple act structure where everyone's separated and you actually work with different groups. It's weird that I enjoy that. Because I've looked at stuff like Fire, like Final Fantasy VI and been like, I hate the fact that I can't train all my units at once. I hate, I want to you know, bring all my characters in and I don't want to just like leave them out. Yet I love the way that Radiant Dawn did it. I love the fact that stuff is happening all over the continent and that you actually have units tailored to each of those things. I've played through it several times. The only reason why I don't play it more, well, first of all, I don't have my Wii right now, and second of all. It's a long game. The, that's that's really the only thing keeping me from playing it over and over again is just how long it is. I think that, but I think that if my only complaint is that there's too much content, it's not really a bad complaint. I think it's kind of solid there. Yeah, where's the next? Where's Shadow Dragon? Here it is. It doesn't even look like it. Shadow Dragon C tier. Just gonna say that much. It's... is it C-tier? Yeah, I'm getting it C-tier. It's it's definitely an improvement over, you know, FE1. Arguably an improvement over FE3. Uh, I was not a fan of the free-changing units between any different class. I just never felt like it was that great. Especially when, like, it changed your growths as well, and then so there's all these people being like, oh, you know, you need to optimize your characters and all this nonsense, and I just never... As soon as I feel like I'm doing something that's suboptimal, I instantly hate the game, you know, like 10% more, if not, like, a lot more. Uh, that said, the more I look at the game, the more I experience it, the more I learn about it, the more I watch it, the more I play it, the funner it becomes, and so it's definitely one of those games that it's a slow burn, but it does build up over time. I do definitely enjoy say, Shadow Dragon a lot more now than I used to. And when I got Shadow Dragon, I 100%ed that thing. I did a whole death run to see every Gaiden. I uh, I even went on multiplayer. I didn't hack, even though everyone in multiplayer was hacking, but. During my death run, I saved up a couple units and saved all my stat boosters so I could just trick out the most overpowered uh, multiplayer team that was still legit to make, and I got every single multiplayer medal in that game. I played the crap out of that game. I loved it so much at the time. After a while, I thought it was my least favorite uh, Fire Emblem game, and then I played the whole series, and now I'm putting it in C rank. Because the more I play Fire Emblem, the more I appreciate what Shadow Dragon does, but I definitely agree that it goes kind of like with Binding Blade. The first time you play it, it's not going to feel that great. Hmm, Heroes of Light and Shadow, where do I put this? Hmm. I definitely had a better opinion of it the first time I played it. I also played it on a much harder difficulty. And on that harder difficulty, it turned into more of a puzzle game than an actual just strategy game. And by the end game, it suffered from uh, Fate's End Game problem, which I'll get into later. Uh, it's a C rank. I can't give this, you know, any less than Shadow Dragon. I still feel the same way about it. I I feel like whereas Shadow Dragon gets better over time, um, 
new mystery stays about the same. Might get a little better in some ways, a little worse in others. Uh, it definitely is a game that has a lot of potential and has a lot of value to it, but kind of struggles. Kind of doesn't really get there. It doesn't really do it for me. Um, plus the fact that it's on the same maps as FE3 Book 2 doesn't really help matters, because some of those maps... Some of those maps are cool, some of those maps suck. <laughs> Looking at you, Fire Dragon Volcano. Then we get to Awakening, and oh boy, everyone's gonna have opinions on this. Awakening... Okay, if I'm gonna say this, I've gotta say it now. If Shadow Dragon and Binding Blade get better the more you play it, Awakening gets worse the more you play it. I'm just gonna drop that bomb right here. I still say it's not a bad game, but the more you play it, the more its flaws start glaring through. Especially if you ever touch this game on Lunatic, you are not going to enjoy the game anymore. It just spams stats. It... this... like, maybe Stat Emblem started at other times, or in other ways, in other places, but Awakening was the peak of what I call Stat Inflation Emblem, because higher difficulties, especially Lunatic, just throw stats at you. It's just balls of stats that you have to deal with, try to lure out one at a time, and just hope. And sometimes you just have to hope for a dual strike or a dual guard. Um, it's skill emblem to the nth degree, you have to min-max your unit, like, build-wise to get skills. But the fact that when you reclass, you start over at level 1 and you can just keep re-grinding your stats, it does slow your experience gain based on total levels gained, but... Honestly, it's probably going to be a D rank for me at this point. When I first played it, it would definitely be an A or B rank, but the more I play it... I did almost two full runs of Lunatic, guys. I started this game on hard difficulty, I enjoyed it. Uh, I did a Lunatic run, I only got like to chapter 20-ish in the Volmark before I just said screw it. I came back later, I decided to do a full Lunatic run. Beat it, hated it just didn't want it, unlocked Lunatic Plus, and decided I'm never touching this again. And so I can't give it more than a D rank. I'm not going to give it less than a D rank, though, because I definitely... I could give it a C rank if I'm feeling generous, but again, i definitely not a fan of Awakening anymore. And I'm not even going to say it's like just map design or stuff. It's just the way the game throws stats at you. I just hate. I'm sure if I had only ever played it on normal or hard, I would have enjoyed it a lot more, but ever since touching it on Lunatic, I just can't stand that game anymore. But speaking of controversial games, let's get to the Fates games, shall we? Hmm, well, Birthright... I'm gonna do two things that upset people. First, I'm gonna put Bir Birthright uh, in C rank. <laughs> I'm gonna put Birthright in C rank, and I'm gonna put Birthright above Awakening. Probably can't. I can't put Birthright above Awakening. Birthright is basically just Awakening, but a little bit better balanced. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, and I guess that would make it C rank. <laughs> yeah, a Birthright's just better balanced Awakening. Uh, it's simple. It's not too bad. Lunatic difficulty is stats, but it's not as broken stats emblem as Awakening was. Um, its story's alright. It's the only story where Corrin makes any sort of sense whatsoever. It's the only story where the plot makes any sort of sense in Fates. It's... It gets a lot of hate for being free grind and all that stuff, but Birthright's not bad. Birthright's not bad. Conquest. Oh boy, do I have feelings on Conquest. Conquest... Okay. So here's the deal. Part of me wants to throw Conquest straight into F tier. Because Conquest is the only Fire Emblem game that I have never... Okay, first of all, I only ever played Conquest on Lunatic because I'm an idiot. Uh, I've never played it on hard, so maybe that's actually, you know, good. But most recently, especially recently, just this last month, I decided Three Houses is coming out soon, I'm gonna play Conquest on Lunatic again get through it without using, you know, my castle stuff online and all that fun stuff. And you know what? I had a lot of fun. 
I had a lot of fun until chapter 19 and the stupid foxes. Like, that chapter wasn't even that hard, it just uses nonsense trickery to get the upper hand and to kill units because everything has pass and has freaking mirage and it can move every turn, we can only attack it every other turn. Uh, then you go into, uh, I guess then it's the Wind Tribe, and then you cross the Great Wall, and it just, look, the middle ten chapters, like chapter like, you know, eight or nine through eighteen or so, are really good, are really enjoyable, and that's what saves the game from being F-tier. But the end game, the last seven chapters of that game, suck hard. They, there is no, there is no way I'm giving this any better than a D at most. Just because of that. The story's hot garbage, the, it doesn't make any sense. I've never wanted to punch my own main character in the face as much as I have with Conquest Corrin. I just don't like it. I don't like the way anyone's portrayed in the main story. Everyone hates you and you hate yourself, and it's just a depressing game to play. Playing through the gameplay-wise, it's decent. Like it said, it's fun in some parts, not fun in others. I definitely enjoy it more after playing through all the Fates games and then coming back to it, so I actually understand the mechanics and the characters. But it's gotta get like an E rank from me. I'm sorry, I can't give it any better than that. I, I just can't. The end game sucks too much. I've rage quit this game. In my very first playthrough, granted it was a lunatic and I was an idiot, I rage quit on no less than three occasions. And even so, I have never, never beaten the endgame chapter. Like I said, I played through all the way. I got to Takumi, played his chapter like three freaking times, got to him. Can't beat him. I can't beat that chapter because I don't have rescue or pass. And for some, and a game that requires you to have, like to save, your limited use items just for the end game when they give it to you like the last rescue staff you get is freaking chapter 20 I think yeah you get a ch rescue staff in the wind village that's the last rescue staff you get and each one only has two uses the fact that they basically ask you one hey save it to the very last chapter two use it in this really oddly specific way that doesn't otherwise make any sense unless you actually plan things out from the beginning any game that requires you to go through that madness it's a bad game i'm sorry it just it just sucks it's not good if i wanted to plan things out like crazy i'd do a fire emblem 7 ranked run or an fe4 ranked run or i'd try to do an ltc run i'm not touching conquest again i'm sick of it I'm sick of people saying that it has the best gameplay in the series. I'm sick of it saying that it has great map design. Yeah, chapters 8 through 18, pretty fun. Doesn't excuse chapters 19 through 27. You can't say a whole game is great overall and just gloss over the worst parts of it when the worst parts of it are the worst parts of Fire Emblem, period. I hate Conquest. There's your hot take of the day. Revelations is mediocre. I'm just gonna say that much. Revelations is contrived as all get out. It's it makes no freaking sense. It tries to tell you everything while at the same time not telling you enough of anything. So its story is all over the place. Ninety percent of Revelations maps shouldn't even happen. They only happen because the plot has to contrive for a map to exist here. Um characters break characterization all the time, they're inconsistent, uh, the balance is all over the place, what's balance when you get units that are promoted level 10 and like unpromoted level 10 in the same chapter, doesn't make any sense, uh, it's all over the place, still not bad, it kinda asks you to grind a little bit in some parts, still not bad. Granted, when I went through Revelations I had a full team of royals and half of them were flyers, I didn't care. I skipped over most of that game's garbage, because um, it decided, hey, Dragon Veins are fun, let's put Dragon Veins everywhere. But if you have enough Royals, you don't care about who needs to use a Dragon Vein, because everyone can use them. And if you have enough Flyers, you don't care about like Teleporters and stuff, because you can just fly over all that. It's a fun game if you just use Flyers and Royals. 
and the game basically builds it up to say, hey, just use the Royals, because we're going to make every other unit suck. That's Revelations in a nutshell. It's a solid, mediocre experience. It's pretty fun to work with all the random gimmicks. It never gets as stupid BS hard as Conquest. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I like it. And that just leaves Echoes. <laughs> Shadows of Valencia. Honestly, I still cry whenever I watch this game, whenever I see it played, whenever I play it myself. It's so beautiful. I care about all the characters. Look, I I don't even care that Celica's, you know, the last chapter of Celica stuff doesn't make sense. I played this game so much. I got all the DLC. I overclassed and capped all my units. I got every badge in the game. All three ancient regalia. Echoes is fun. Echoes is a great time. I love it. I've only replayed it once, and that was just for a normal, casual run, just to get the Blitzkrieg medal easy. Um, the only downside I'd say is that I haven't really wanted to replay it, but that's because, like, how am I going to, you know, I, I haven't wanted to replay it, just because I had such good experiences and memories the first time I played it that I didn't want to, you know, sully those. But it's an S-tier game. It's amazing. It really shows just the level of difference that putting in that much more time and effort can do for a game over, like, Awakening or the other ones. It's the end of a console's lifespan, so obviously it didn't sell as good. But it's solid, it's great, and I love it so much, and it's beautiful, and everyone should play this game! It's great! But yeah, that's my Fire Emblem game tier list. Now, no game's F tier, I don't hate any game in the series, even Conquest, when I... Even though I'm sick to death of Conquest, it still is a decent game. I still have fun with it, I still think it's playable. Uh, yeah. Just tell me your hot takes in the comments below. Tell me how wrong I am for my tier list, but this is what I got. This is this is what I came up with. These are my thoughts on every game in the series. Yeah. They're all good. You should play all of them, but, you know, these are my thoughts on what the best games are. But thanks so much for watching. This is Mithril Zenith, signing out.